Okay, so let's go over factoring binomials. So we factored by grouping, which is four terms. We have factored trinomials, which is three terms. And now we just need to touch on factoring binomials, which is what? Two terms. So what you should do when you're trying to factor a binomial is I always recommend that you make sure it's in descending order. I always like to recommend descending order. Then you should always factor out a greatest common factor if one exists. But that's the rule for everything, right? For trinomials and especially for four-term polynomials and trinomials, definitely always check to see if there's a GCF to factor out if possible. Okay. And then the third step is we want to check to see if we're looking at the difference of squares okay and so what is the difference of squares so the difference of squares is when we have two perfect squares a squared minus b squared being subtracted difference of squares so it always factors into a minus b and a plus b. So let's look at x squared minus 9. So we want to make sure that we know perfect squares. So perfect squares are the outcomes from squaring a value, raising it to the second power. That outcome creates a perfect square. So a perfect square is a number that has two of the same factors has two of the same factors. So x squared minus 9 would factor into an x plus 3 and an x minus a 3. So what happens here, remember, when we are factoring, we are supposed to be able to multiply this problem back together to get back the original. And so our signs have to be opposite here so that when we distribute or FOIL, We need the middle terms to do what? To completely cancel out so that we are only left with x squared minus 9. So that is why when you do the difference of squares, the signs must be opposite. So one thing that I like to show, what happens if you try to factor and you use the same sign? So let's say we had x squared plus 9. Well, x squared plus 9 isn't going to be able to factor. When you go through the rules for factoring binomials, it's descending order, there's no GCF, and I check it for the difference of squares, but it's not a difference of a square. It's some sum of a square, but you can't factor the sum of squares. So if you tried, in theory, you would try a plus 3 and a plus 3. So if we were to multiply that out, Look at this. You still end up with a middle term. To factor means you are creating the product that will multiply to create the original. This does not multiply to create the original, which means that is not how it's factored. So x squared plus 9 actually is not factorable at all. So I just wanted to show you that it's important for you to recognize it's about the difference of squares, not the sum. Okay? So being able to factor the difference of sums. So let's look at 4x squared minus 25. So 4 is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square, and it's subtracted. So once you see that, then you should say, okay, I need two sets of parentheses. So 4x squared, what creates, what are the two factors that are alike, right? Because it should be AABB, meaning you're using the same number in the set of parentheses with just that middle sign, one being plus, one being minus. So 4x squared would break up into 2x and 2x, and 25 would break up into what? 5 and 5. Okay? It is not a divide by 2. It is a square rooting, essentially. How does the problem split up? So look, 8. We can't use 8. But let's do 8. 8 minus... 16 and see what happens. So 8x squared minus 16, according to the rules of factoring, 
It's in descending order. Is there a greatest common factor? Yes, there is. The GCF here is what? Some people are going to think four, but that is not it. The GCF is an eight, right? So you got to take your time. So when I factor eight out, I'm left with X squared minus two. Now you look at what's left. Can you factor X squared minus two? Well, it's not a difference of squares because there's nothing you can break two up into to create um, other than a two and a one. So it's not a trinomial. Remember that. Like you can only create this binomial again if it's this, a difference of squares. So it's not a trinomial, which means you can't use the rules that we've already learned. You're just using your rules for factoring a binomial. And so once you've done that, this is it. And because we factor out a GCF, that means we were able to factor it so it is not a prime, okay? So you would not consider that a prime. If you are able to factor out a GCF other than a one, that means it was factorable. So you would just factor out that GCF and be done with it, okay? So factoring binomials, factoring the difference of squares, factoring the difference of squares. So let's look. All right, 4x squared minus 9. So 4x squared minus 9, 4 is perfect, 9 is perfect. So 2x, 2x plus 3 and a minus 3. All right. 16x squared minus 49. So they don't share anything in common. There's no GCF. So 16 is a perfect square because 16 is 4 and 4. 49 is 7 times 7. So 4x, 4x plus a 7 minus a 7. And it doesn't matter who you put plus. So meaning if you have 4x minus 7 or 4x plus 7, this still gives you the same outcome because multiplication is what? Commutative. Okay. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So let's move on. To solving by factoring. So solving by factoring is when we are actually going to solve, meaning find a solution for the variable within the given um, equation or given quadratic. So before we want to solve by factoring, we want to define the quadratic equation for ourselves. You do want to make sure you know the form. So the quadratic, quadratic equation in form. AX squared plus BX plus C is always equal to zero. A should never be equal to zero. And then your A, B, and C are real numbers. So when you're solving a quadratic, quadratic means you have an exponent of at least two present. <clears throat> this is the standard form of the equation, right? It's in descending order, which is considered standard form. And the equation is equal to zero. The way that we solve by factoring of the quadratic equation is we use something called the zero factor theorem. And the zero factor theorem essentially says that if a times b is equal to zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero, right? Which makes sense because anything times zero is zero. So if you have two factors, that are multiplied together and they equal zero, then that means one of those factors should be equal to zero. So you set each factor equal to zero. That's what the factor theorem says. And we use the factor theorem to help us be able to solve a quadratic equation 
using factoring. All right, so we want to see what that looks like. Now, first, we're going to go through the steps of what we need. So we use the fact the zero theorem, the zero factor theorem, to help us be able to solve the process um, of a quadratic equation by factoring. So let's take a look at that. So when we are solving by factoring, there is a there is a process that we need to follow, and the process is important. The first thing is, is you should always write your equation in standard form. Write it in standard form. So it needs to, you need to make the equation equal zero. So you make your equation equal to zero, okay? Then you factor. Your expression. Then you're going to set each factor. Equal to zero. Because what we're doing is we're using the zero factor theorem. And then you're going to solve for each variable. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Let's start off with an easy problem. So we have x plus 3 times x minus 2. So it says write the equation in standard form, which basically means make the equation equal to 0. So this problem is already equal to 0. Do not waste your time trying to multiply this together because the second step says for you to factor. So once you see that your equation is equal to zero, you're good on your first step. Your second step says to factor the expression. Oh, well, it's already factored. X plus three times X minus two, right? Factors mean it's in a product form. Third step says set each factor equal to zero. So now, because we have an A times a B equal to zero, remember your zero um, factor theorem, we can set each individual factor equal to zero. So we have X plus three equals zero. And then we have X minus two equals zero. The last step says solve for each variable. So we're just gonna solve for each X that we have. So when we're solving, solving is always about isolating a variable on one side of the equation. So if I want x plus 3 equals 0, I'm going to do the opposite of add, which is subtract 3 from both sides. So x equals negative 3. Here, x minus 2 equals 0. Because it's subtracting from the x, I'm going to do the opposite operation, which is add. So I get x equals 2. So we have two answers, negative 3 and 2. And what do you do? You can check it. So you would plug in x, but you would have to take it one at a time. So when you check, you would check for x to equal 3 and see if you get a true statement. So 0 times 1 is 0. Yeah, that's true. Then you would substitute in the 2 And you would get 5 times 0 equals 0. Well, that's true, too. 0 equals 0. So remember, a solution means that when you substitute your values into the original problem, you get a true statement back. So when I check for each x, I do get back a true statements for both of them, which means negative 3 and 2 is correct. Okay? All right, let's look at another one. Hopefully you wrote the steps down because I'm about to erase the steps. So if you didn't, you should pause it, write down the steps, and then play me again. And we're going to move on with other problems. All right, so here we have x times 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. So here, 
my equation is equal to zero, so that's step one, I'm good. Step two says that you need to factor it. Oh, well, this is factored already because I have x times another factor, 5x minus 2, so I'm good there. The next step says set each factor to zero, so I have an x equals zero factor, and I have a 5x minus 2 equals zero factor, and then we just solve for each x. So in the first one, I'm finished because my variable is already isolated. In my second one, I have to isolate this x because that's how we solve. So to solve this, I'm going to have to undress this x. So the 2 is going to have to move and the 5. The 2 moves first because he is subtracting from x. I will add him to himself and cross the equal sign. So 5 times x equals 2. And then 5 times x equals 2. In order to separate the 5 times the x, we will do the opposite of multiplication which in this case is a divide. So we're using the multiplication property of equality. So we get x is equal to 2 over 5. So it's always the opposite operation of what we see occurring in order for us to isolate the x. And so our answers are 0 and 2 fifths. And that's it. And we are finished there. So being able to solve by factoring solving for your x when your equation when you have an equation okay and you know it's a solve because there's an equal sign present in the problems we were doing before we were just factoring there was no equal sign present now we're solving so the equal sign will be present in the original problem okay all right let's look at this x squared minus 9x minus 22 equals 0. So on this particular problem, we are trying to solve by factoring. So first, is the equation equal to 0? Yes, it is. Next step says you need to factor. So I'm going to go through my factoring process. So it's in descending order. Is there a GCF? No, there is not. So now I'm just going to go ahead and factor. So factor the 22. So I need factors of negative 22. That'll give me a 9. So factors that I can use are 2 and 11. Uh, a plus 2 and a negative 11. That'll give me a negative 9. Yes. If I multiply those values, I get negative 22. So double check. So then I factor. So x plus 2 times x minus 11 equals to 0. So I factor. Your third step says you should set each factor equal to zero. So I have a x plus two factor. I have a x minus eleven factor. So what is x? If I'm trying to solve for x here, it's x plus two. So how do I get x by itself? What is the opposite of addition? I will subtract two from both sides. So x equals negative two. This is the addition property of equality x minus 11 equals 0. So it's subtracting. So the opposite operation is a plus 11. Add him to himself to cancel and add him to the 0 on the other side to get x is equal to 11. So we get two outcomes, negative 2 and 11. And you can always test it, right? And you test by substituting your values in. Your check, you substitute your values in to each x. So you have to separate and substitute them in one at a time. So it would be negative 2 squared minus 2. So we have to substitute it in and then simplify. 4 plus 18 minus 22. So this will give us 22 minus 22 equals 0, which is 0. So you know you did it correct. Okay. Then we would substitute in the 11. 11 squared minus 9 times 11 minus 22 should equal 0. So when you do it, it will be 22 minus 22, which is 0, equals 0, which is correct. So you can always check your work by substituting your answers into the original equation to see if you get a true statement back. So we get negative 2 and 11, which is the correct answer. Okay. All right, now 
when we solve and we factor, let's look at this one. x cubed minus 12x squared plus 32x equals 0. So on this particular example, we are solving. We know we're solving because there's an equal sign present. And so that lets us know it's already equal to 0, so we're good on the first step. The second step says we need to factor. So when we look at our equation, what's going on here? Well, there's a greatest common factor. When it is not a quadratic, meaning your exponent is a 2, there's most likely a GCF present. So I have a GCF here of an X. So I factor that X out and I'm left with X squared minus 12 X plus 32. So now we have to finish factoring this trinomial. So factor the 32, that'll give us a 12. Here we go, eight and four. So a negative eight and a negative four would give a negative 12. Yep, if you multiply negative eight times negative four, you get plus 32, yep. So I double check, so I know that these are my factors. So I get X minus eight, X minus four. I bring down my GCF X. So now my problem is factored. The next step says that you should set each factor equal to zero. So when I set each factor equal to zero, I have X equals zero, every factor. Factors are things that are being multiplied to other things. I have a second factor here, X minus eight equals zero. And then I have a third factor, X minus four equals zero. All right, so X equals zero, that one's done because the X is already isolated. The second one I have X minus eight equals zero. So I need to solve this for X. How do I isolate X here? Well, it's subtracting an 8, so I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So I get X equals 8. The next one, X minus 4 equals 0, so I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I get X is 4. So our answers are 0, 8, and 4. Now, what do we see here? On the previous examples, we had two answers. On this example, we have three answers. When you look at the original polynomial, we did polynomials, and we identified the degree of the polynomial when we first started. The degree of the polynomial is found by the highest exponent value present in that polynomial. Well, the degree of the polynomial will also tell you the number of solutions. The degree of the polynomial will tell you the number of solutions. Okay. So 0, 8, and 4. It's a third degree. We should end up with three answers. Okay. So being able to solve by factoring. Make sure your equation is equal to 0. And then you factor. Then you set each factor to 0 and solve each equation. Of course, everything's not going to always already be equal to zero. So here we have x squared minus 26 equals negative 11x. So I'm trying to solve this here. I'm trying to solve this. So when I look at it, the equation is not equal to zero. So what's that mean? That means I need to make the equation equal zero. So the first thing that I'm gonna have to do is rearrange this problem. So we have to make the equation equal zero and we use our rules of solving to be able to do that. So anytime we wanna cross the equal sign, we have to use our rules of addition property of equality. So this is a negative 11 X term has to move across the equal sign to be on the same side with the x squared and the 26. So because he is negative 11x, we need to make this basically cancel out on this side. So the opposite would be to add 
11x to both sides of the equation. Now, on the left side, there is no like term for the 11x. He can't combine with the x squared, and he doesn't combine with the 26. Because, right, like terms, meaning the variable and exponents must match perfectly. So, we would just put him in the middle, and I'm putting him in the middle, why? I'm putting him in the middle because I need him to be in descending order. So, even if you put him at the end, you would still need to rearrange him to go in the middle like he needs to, because what do you need? You need your equation to be in standard form, which means descending order and equal to zero. So then from there we do factors of the 26, that'll give us the 11. So I'm thinking the two and the 13, a minus two, a plus 13 will give a plus 11. If I multiply them, I will get a negative 26. So that double checks. So I do two sets of parentheses. I have an X minus a two and an X plus a 13 and that equals zero. And now what? Well, now I do X minus two equals zero. X plus 13 equals zero, right? Once you factor, you just set each factor equal to zero. So we're looking at, I'm gonna add two to both sides. Here, I'm gonna subtract 13. So we end up with two and negative 13 as our values for X. And that is us solving by factoring, okay? So hopefully that was helpful.